When you rip a wrister from the faceoff dot past the goaltender, but it turns out that's your team's goaltender, you know you've earned a spot at the bottom of my rankings. Then again, there's also the Chicago Blackhawks. Hey Twisters, welcome to my midseason NHL power rankings. So the way I'm doing this, I'm picking one play for each team that best exemplifies their season so far. But I didn't pick all these myself. I reached out to you guys over Twitter. I received lots of great responses. So a lot of your content is actually going to make it in this video. And if you didn't reply to me on Twitter, make sure you drop a comment down below. Give me your top five and your bottom five teams as well. All right, let's get to our rankings. At the very bottom, in 32nd, I have the Chicago Blackhawks. Just look at this play right here. Look at the lazy back checking from Max Domi. Seth Jones not exactly doing his team any favors as well as they give up a shorthanded goal. There really isn't any better way to sum this up than from our friend Nick from Windy City Hockey. So, Nick, take it away. Honestly, the worst I've seen all season. Max Domi's back checking effort to get back was horrendous. Steph Jones didn't even seem to attempt to make a defensive play it leads to a 2-1 lead for the Jackets you already saw who I have in 31st and that's the Anaheim Ducks here Jakob Silverberg actually scores on his own goaltender of course unintentionally and I know that the Ducks have been playing better recently but then again they still only have four regulation wins in the NHL that is dead last and so they're staying in 31st in 30th, I have the Columbus Blue Jackets. So far, it's been an absolute train wreck of a season for them. They had a lot of promise going into this year, but they have lots of young talent, so they still need some time. Nonetheless, Elvis Merzlik ends, man. This really sums it up here for him and his team. The turnover by Line A at the point. Merge Likens on the season has a 4.78 goals against average and an 861 save percentage. Jonas Corposalo has actually been a bit of a bright spot for them. In 29th, I have my San Jose Sharks. Look at this great goal from Eric Carlson. Literally shoots it off of Detroit Red Wings players, but, but Carly, I gotta say, he's to blame for this season. Because he's doing so damn well that we're not going to get Connor Bedard, most likely. He really is the only reason why the Sharks are not in dead last in that division. He's been tons of fun to watch this season. But yeah, the goaltending has also been bad as well. I want to throw a shout out here to Finn Lowenberg for this play from the same game by James Reimer, who's been pretty bad for the Sharks this year, too. So yeah, I've got them in 29th. In 28th, I have the Arizona Coyotes. Now, two things keep them from being at the very bottom of the NHL standings. Number one, their home record. They're actually 7-3-2, and two, so not very many games played at Mullet Arena so far, but maybe they'll climb up in the power rankings later this year. And the other thing is anytime they play the Toronto Maple Leafs. In 27th, I have the Montreal Canadiens. Now, they actually started the season pretty well, but since then... Cole Caulfield and Nick Suzuki have been pretty cold. And even so, when you're getting two goals from Cole Caulfield, your defense still looks like absolute trash here in this 9-2 blowout against the Washington Capitals. You let Nick Dowd come in unscathed and score a goal on this play. So certainly Montreal is looking more like the team from last year. In 27th, I had the Philadelphia Flyers. Now under Tortorella, this team has been working harder. They've won their last four games, so that's great. Also, Carter Hart has really done a great job rebounding after a couple of tough years. Look at this beautiful paddle save from him. So he torts pretty much two of the big reasons why this team is not in last place in the Metropolitan Division. In 25th, I have the Vancouver Canucks. Certainly a huge disappointment this season. And what better way to really exemplify things than the frustration here shown from JT Miller as he's actually cursing at Colin Delia to get the f*** off the ice. And as for JT Miller's performance, it hasn't been at the level that it was last season where he broke out for 99 points. So far, he has 14 goals, 18 assists for 32 points, which isn't bad, but certainly not that great when you consider the deal that he was recently given. In 24th, I have the Detroit Red Wings, and one play that definitely comes to mind comes from that 4 nothing deficit that they had against the Pittsburgh Penguins. It really was that third goal here from Jason Zucker as Philip Perona gets absolutely walked around. As I've said with Husa before, he's not a bell cow goaltender. He's not going Going to start 55 games and put up a 915 save percentage. He slides off the more you have to rely on him, and that's certainly been the case over his last several games. And the Red Wings defense has also been pretty atrocious. I know that they won this game, but performances like this to start out games is not going to get you back into a playoff spot. In 23rd, I have the St. Louis Blues. Really disappointing season from them so far, especially after last year. No better way to sum things up than this cheap shot from Jordan Binnington. Speaking of Jason Zucker, he was actually in the last highlight. But yeah, Binnington this season has been garbage for most of it. And I think he's one reason why they're really not in a playoff spot right now. 
In 22nd, I have the Ottawa Senators, and maybe a few weeks ago they would have been lower on this list. They've been playing better as of late. One huge reason is their great power play, and thank you so much, Prague Senator, for tweeting at me for this highlight. And they're now ranked third in the NHL in power play, and this is coming against the top-ranked penalty kill in the Boston Bruins. So if the Senators want to make a run at a wild card, their man advantage play will certainly have to stay at this rate. In 21st, I have the Florida Panthers. Really doesn't look like the team from the past couple of seasons. They've had a hard time holding leads so far this season. No better way to sum this up than our friend Jaws from Flying Fluffy. Take it away, Jaws. All right, let's finish this. I got my blankie. I'm doing my yoga. I have my peanut butter and jelly bagel. <laughs> Every <laughs> time I'm positive, that's what happens. That's why they're kind of on the outside looking in with the playoff picture. In 20th, I have the Nashville Predators. Thank you so much, Stupid Seal, for this great highlight here of Yusei Saros. Now, Saros actually got off to kind of a bad start this season, but he's really put it together and actually might even be having a better season than he did last year. His quality start percentage is the best of his career as a starter so far. So really, he's the reason why the Predators have been able to climb back into the playoff picture. In 19th, I have the New York Islanders. They still are relevant in the playoff picture, but have tailed off quite a bit since the start of the season. And and kind of like with the Predators, as we just saw, really, you could point to any big save from Ilya Sorokin as he's carrying the team. He is the straw that stirs the drink for a fairly defensive-minded club. And, of course, he could certainly find his way into the Vezina conversation at the end of the season, especially if the Islanders find a way to make the playoffs. But for number 18, we go to a team that is struggling with their starting goaltending, and that's the Edmonton Oilers. Look at this soft goal given up here by Jack Campbell. There are highlights that show that it almost looked like the puck went through his glove, and you look at his meshing in his glove. It's very spaced apart. Terrible season so far from Jack Campbell, signed in the offseason. He has an 878 save percentage. At least they've been getting good goaltending from Stuart Skinner, so that's one reason why they're still kind of relevant in the playoff conversation. In 17th, I have the Pittsburgh Penguins, and we'll sum things up with this shot off the crossbar here from Brian Rust. The Penguins have been struggling as of late, and they've been healthy for most of this season, whereas in previous years, they've been banged up a ton, and yet they've been contending for as high of a spot as first in the division. So... Penguins fans, let me know what you think in the comments down below. It seems that there's something missing with this team, and Brian Rust, I think, is kind of one of those players. He only has nine goals so far. All right, so we're midway through our midseason power rankings, but I want to point out one thing here, guys. See my pinned comment down below. I noticed that a lot of you guys really like NHL goal horns, so I'm finally going to rank them in a future video. But what would make that video a lot better, kind of like what we're doing here and going forward on this channel, I want your input, guys. So click the link in the pinned comment where you can fill out your goal horn rankings. Right now, we have 16 responses. I think with 5,600 subscribers on this channel, we could at least get 50. So guys, click that link and help us out, and let's get your voice heard in that upcoming video. And you can also see other great rankings videos to watch in that same pinned comment. Okay, so we're at number 16. So in theory, these could be teams that are making the playoffs going forward. So I've got the Buffalo Sabres. This team has been really hot as of late. They started the season hot. They cooled down a whole bunch. And I said, yeah, this is probably the Buffalo team we're going to end up getting at the season's end. And then they turned it up again. And one huge reason who else but Tage Thompson? Look at this absolutely silky goal against the Tampa Bay Lightning. He has 31 goals so far this season in 38 games. This guy, I think, should be in the MVP conversation, the Hart Trophy conversation, if the Sabres make the playoffs. He's second in goals to only Connor McDavid. In 15th is the team that I predicted to win the Stanley Cup before the season started, and that's the Calgary Flames. They're starting to get things rolling a little bit. Who would have thought that Milan Lucic would have been the missing ingredient on the second line with Nazem Kadri and Jonathan Huberdeau? Is that sustainable? By all means, it probably isn't. But something's working for them, and Calgary is slowly starting to creep up in the standings there in the Pacific Division, so keep it up. In 14th, I have the Colorado Avalanche. Now, they've been banged up a whole bunch this season, and yet they still find themselves in a playoff spot if we look at points percentage. So when I think of one play that best describes their season so far, it's this power play goal set up from Makar to Evan Rodriguez. Rodriguez has had to play a ton in the top six. He's got nine goals so far. He's been a really good pickup for them. And of course, Makar, in addition to Rontanen and McKinnon, are big reasons why the Avalanche are still in that playoff conversation. And it's also because of their power play. I think they rank in the top 25% among NHL teams in that respect. So really, if anything, they're missing that even strength offense. Hopefully they get that once Gabriel Landeskog returns to the team. We don't know exactly when that's going to be, though, but he'll be a huge boost. In 13th, I have the Seattle Kraken. Now, I know that in terms of points percentage, they're much better, 
but the thing is I don't trust their goaltending whatsoever. The highlight that I picked is an Andre Burakovsky overtime goal in a 9-8 to barn burner against the LA Kings. So certainly the goaltending from, for the Kraken has been subpar to be kind. And so that's one reason why I'm not entirely sure I can trust them as a contender in that division. We also have an honorable mention here from Roy, and that is Maddie Beneers, who is maybe going to win the Calder Trophy this year, scoring seven seconds into overtime. So he's been a shot in the arm as well. He's right behind Burakovsky for the team lead in points. In 12th, I have the New Jersey Devils. Now, a month ago, they probably would have been like third in our power rankings. They have definitely taken a slide since then, as I expected, but... Recently, they just beat the New York Rangers. They came back in that game. That was a tremendous game. I do have the Rangers ranked higher, but the Devils, hopefully they can get back to playing that sort of hockey. If they do, it's going to be because of somebody like Jack Hughes. Despite being only 5'11 and 175 pounds, I really like the work ethic of Hughes along the boards, and his defensive game is very good as well. So he's a huge reason why this team is still very comfortably in a playoff spot, but he has to keep this up. Maybe a hard trophy caliber season for him if the Devils find a way to make it into the postseason. In 11th, I have the LA Kings. Now, certainly they have some subpar goaltending, but they've gotten a lot of great contributions up and down the lineup. The real surprise here is Gabe Velarde. He has 16 goals and 14 assists after I thought that he was probably going to be a career AHLer. So he certainly has been one reason why they're finding themselves in the top three in the Pacific Division. So great season. We'll see if he can keep it up and maybe even flirt for 30 goals. In 10th, I'm pretty stunned to say this. I have the Washington Capitals. This team has been amazing over the past month or so. They looked dead to rights in that division, but now they could even flirt with a top three spot. Alex Ovechkin has been terrific this year. He's on pace for about 57 goals. And so I think of this OT winner he scored against Philly, and now they're going to get back Tom Wilson and Nicholas Backstrom. So this team is finally healthy or getting healthy. Are they really this good? We're going to see, but they've been really fun to watch, not only offensively, but especially defensively. I think they're like eighth in goals against or ninth. In ninth, I've got the New York Rangers, and one reason why they're climbing the standings in that division is because of the productivity from Adam Fox. He could be back in the Norris Trophy conversation this season. Just look at this beautiful feed here in transition. The Rangers have been kind of interesting in that they might only have two 30-goal scorers on the team. Lafreniere, Kako, they haven't necessarily made as much progress as we would hope. But, of course, with the goaltending, they're going to probably find themselves back in the playoffs again. Fox, though, I think has been the straw that stirs the drink for this team this year. In eighth place, we've got another team that I counted out this season, and that's the Minnesota Wild. I had no idea that Philip Gustafsson would be as good as he's been this year. Look at this, a 924 save percentage and a 2.25 goals against average. We'll see just how many starts he gets down the stretch, but he has been amazing this year after a terrible season this last year in Ottawa. So really got to give him a lot of credit. In seventh, I've got the Tampa Bay Lightning, and what better play here than this great interception in the neutral zone from Braden Point, just an absolute threat in all three zones. And then the puck eventually makes it on the stick of Brandon Hagel. Hagel, I was more of a Nick Paul fan uh, when comparing the two as they were acquired in the trade deadline last year. But Hagel really has been a shot in the arm for this top six, which they needed quite a bit after Palat left for the New Jersey Devils. So Hagel, 15 goals and 16 assists in 38 games. He's having a great year in his first full season in Tampa. In sixth, I have the Dallas Stars, a team that I'm counting on to make a very deep run in the playoffs. And of course, I could choose anything involving Jason Robertson, maybe the most electric forward in the Western Conference after Connor McDavid. I'd be willing to back that up and look at this gorgeous pass from Joe Pavelski. He continues to age like a fine wine. In fifth, I have the Winnipeg Jets. That's this team right here. And two huge reasons why this team is at the top of the Central Division and has been consistently maybe the best team in the Western Conference this year. First of all, Pierre-Luc Dubois, I was totally wrong about this guy. He's had an amazing year, not a distraction in the locker room whatsoever. Also have to credit Rick Bonus, but also I got to shout out Zach here on Twitter for setting me up with this great highlight from Josh Morrissey, a beautiful snipe from the guy who is second among defensemen in the NHL in points and could be a front runner for the Norris Trophy. Yes, Josh Norrissey, his name is. In fourth, I've got the Golden Knights. They're leading the Pacific Division, and they have been all season long. One huge reason why is because they're 15-3-2 and two on the road, the best in the NHL. What better way to sum things up? Thank you so much, Riley, for this excellent highlight of Captain Mark Stone. They missed him a ton this past year, scoring within the last minute against the Los Angeles Kings 
in LA in regulation to give them the dub. But also a shout out to our guy Swish on Twitter for Mark Stone making this other tremendous play. In third, I've got the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I already made a video about this, but Mitch Marner on this penalty kill was incredible. He blocks a shot from Robertson, his stick breaks, he stays out there, and then he gets down without a stick to, to block another shot. Could he be in the sulky trophy conversation? Maybe he could be, and of course, offensively, he was providing a lot for most of this season. And the Maple Leafs have become a really good team when it comes to defense and goaltending. So they've been able to stay in second in that very top heavy Atlantic division. In second, I've got the Carolina Hurricanes. They have lost their last couple of games, sure, but they had an 11 game win streak, a 17 game point streak, a huge reason why they've been so successful this season. I mean, look at these players in this highlight, right? You've got Martin Natchez, who's had an incredible, incredible turnaround after a really disappointing season last year driving a ton of offensive play, huge for that top six. And you've got Brent Burns finishing things off as well. So he kind of replaced D'Angelo in the offseason. And I think that things have worked out even better for him and Jacob Slavin as well. So great couple of performances there in Carolina. And in first, to no surprise, I've got the Boston Bruins. What better way to sum things up than this reckless giveaway from Linus Olmark? And then he just nonchalantly makes the save immediately afterwards. He's 22-1-1 and on the season with a 938 save percentage and a 1.87 goals against average. These are like Patrick Waugh slash Martin Brodeur slash Dominic Hoshik 90s numbers. This is unbelievable. And that's coming when scoring is at an all-time high over the last 30 years. I could pick anything for the Boston Bruins, guys. Comment down below if you have any, any other suggestions. But really, to me... This sums up the Bruins. They just can't do anything wrong. Or if they do something wrong, they fix it immediately. So what do you think of my power rankings, guys? Give me your top five teams and your bottom five teams in the comments down below. And see my pinned comment. Fill out your goal horn rankings. So then that way, your voice is heard in my content. We're going to be doing that a lot more going forward on this channel. You can also see other great rankings videos in my pinned comment. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and like coverage like this of the NHL. And see the video description if you want to either follow me on social media or contribute to the channel. We have memberships with exclusive member content. And you can also just chip in with a donation. We accept that as well. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, I'm Nick. I'll catch you twisters later. Ciao.